this afternoon. I just have a thought that I want to share with us. Many times we don't think about this. I, I have forgotten about it. I just kind of, you know, not totally forgot, but just kind of just lays in dormancy sometimes. And so I just, I think the Lord just impressed me with this to encourage all of us. I mean, it's what the Word of the Lord is about. It's, it's an encouraging. So Luke chapter 7, and we're going to start at the first verse there. Go to verse 10. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. And when he had heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, the Jewish nation. He loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and he, when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I of myself worthy to come I unto thee, but I say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, or he, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about. And said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were went were sent returned to the house and found the servant whole that had been sick. Let's pray. Jesus, we are so thankful today for your word. We pray you encourage, touch our hearts. Here today, inspire us, uplift us, Lord, here today with a message from your word. We pray your anointing be upon it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'm also going to turn to Matthew chapter 8 and read the other setting in which this scripture is spoken of. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth sick at home of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Then the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. And again, when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said unto them that follow, Verily I say to you that I have found those, no such great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven was at hand. Dropping down to verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that self same hour. I want to 
want to share with you here today. Many times we we read different scriptures and we don't see everything that maybe the Lord is doing in certain scriptures as we read them. And sometimes we can read a passage of scripture and it can be really applied to us directly. And sometimes we, we miss what maybe the Lord is saying. And as I was reading over these passages of scripture and praying over them, you know, the thought occurred to me about what he was specifically talking about. Man, this man, the centurion, had had uh, men under him. The centurion is a man that's over, from what I read, over a hundred soldiers. But then he also has servants and different ones that do different things for him. And it appears in Scripture here that this one servant that he had possibly could have been a Jewish servant. And he had favor with the Jewish people. He had helped them. He, was, he had favor with the nation of Israel. He had helped them. The Bible says that he helped them build a temple. He was responsible for restoring or building or, or remodeling or, or perhaps expanding one of the temples where they could have service there. He was a part of that. He gave. He was a giver. He saw of the Jewish people perhaps their faith. And he knew or he had heard evidently of this one called Jesus. And so he was very familiar with what was taking place and as he had heard that potentially this Jesus man was, was nearby, perhaps maybe he had seen him before, evidently he had heard that he was in the area. And so here is Jesus is near Capernaum, near where this man had lived, or where he was quartered at, at this time, and his servant being sick. And he knew that he, not being a Jewish man, not being really a, a, of a Jewish nature, he was a Gentile. He was of a foreign country. He was not of the Jewish breed or culture. But he was a Gentile. And he knew this in his mind. And so he therefore was not willing really to, to be unto Jesus. To meet him or to go unto him. He said, I, I was not worthy to go unto you even to meet you. But I sent my, my servants. I sent some of the Jewish people that I know out to go and to greet you and to bring you in. And as the story unfolds, he, they tell the story how that he's a favor of the nation of Israel and helped build the temple. And, and Jesus just immediately comes and, and was obedient to what they had said. And he wanted to meet the centurion and go in and, and well, absolutely, we're going to go in and we're going we're to pray and, and this guy's going to be healed. Everything's going to be just fine. But then something happens about his humility and he realizes that I'm a Gentile. I can't have this guy under my roof. I'm, I'm, I'm corrupt. I'm vile. I'm, I'm not going to be accepted because he knows that I'm of a Roman nature. I'm, I'm a Gentile. And you know, many times we feel that way when we come into the house of God. Sometimes people that we know, they're afraid to come to the church. They say, well, I'm, I'm not really a believer. I don't know if I go to your church or not. You know, if I go, if I show up, and you've heard people say this, if I go to your church, you better have some people there holding up the walls so that it don't collapse. You know, people think like that. People today still think like that. I ran into multiple people that, that are like, well, I don't know if I go to your church or not. I'm, I'm not worthy to come into your church. And you've seen it before, right? And then you've seen people that are like new converts come into the church. You know, they first come into the church, they're repenting, they're being baptized. How many of you ever seen them before where they first came to the church and they're still feeling that Gentile, that carnal nature. They're still feeling, you know, that they're not worthy. So they're afraid to go up on the platform. They don't want to go up where pastor is on the platform. And they're afraid. And so what do they do? They stay down here and on this main level, don't they? There's an awesomeness. There's a, there's a fear. There's some kind of reverence there. Not only reverence of God and His presence, but I think it's partly because that they know that they are of the Gentile. They're not worthy really to be in this church. But when you look at the brass tax of it, Brother Joseph, none of us are worthy to be in the church, right? Amen. We're all a big, nice hunk of, chunk of dirt, right? With a little bit of dust thrown over the top of it. So none of us are worthy. But people come in sometimes and they're hesitant. So this man here too was also hesitant. In this story, he brings that out. Not only are you not worthy to come into my house, 
But he said, I wasn't even worthy to come to you on the street and to bring you unto my home. So therefore I sent some servants of the Jewish uh, nation out to meet you, to greet you, to bring you to come in. You know, there are some people that don't want to meet us and greet us on the streets, right? There are some people know that you already go to a great church or know you're of a churchy nature. Church, church, church. I hate that word sometimes when people call you churchy. You know what I'm talking about, Brother Evans? People say, well, he's churchy. He goes to church. Well, I don't have nothing to do with him. What are they doing? They're filling their sinfulness. They're filling their... Well, and then I had people avoid me before. Walk around out because they, they knew I was a preacher. They knew I was in the church. They just avoid me. How many glad anybody do that to you? They just avoid your family. Sometimes family will avoid you. You don't be invited to something. Well, 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 well we, we don't want the preacher to show up. My, my sister said that yesterday. I had to bring up an illustration to him, you know, trying to help my family. And she said, okay, preacher Jimmy. I said, no, no, no. I said, this is not about preacher. This is just something you need to know. And I'm just going to share this with you right now. I'm here to remember my sermon, okay? I was talking with my family yesterday. For those of you that are not believers, Lord help you. I'm still praying about this. But you see these cell phones? <laughs> they are listening to you. And you say, no, they're not. Oh, yeah, they are. See, well, mine's just dormant right now. I, I'm not doing it. Well, that doesn't matter. The speaker on this is on all the time. Unless you turn the phone all the way off. It's listening to you. you say, oh, now, brother, oh, come on, you're talking about big brother in government, you know, all that. No, oh, no, no, just listen to me. I don't care who it is that's listening, but I want you to know this. We have had multiple times where my wife and I were talking in private. And then I pick up my phone, and the topic we were talking about was on my Google search bar, ready for me to find her. Multiple times. It's listening to what I'm saying. And then I didn't have to type it in. It had heard what I had said, so it brought it up for me automatically. Now I will tell you what happened yesterday. This is little, the little preacher Jimmy, my, my sister says. I was like, no, no, no. I'm just giving you some information that you need to know. I said, you don't need to trust your cell phone. I'm, and you know, I'm, God help us, but I, I have to be careful what I say because we don't know who is listening, right? But as God was my witness, I was standing in my drive, my dad's driveway. And my sister and my brother were there. My sister had been working in the house helping our parents. She walks in, walks out in the driveway there, and she smokes. So she was coming out taking a cigarette break from cleaning the house and stuff. I was doing other things. And, and so she needs a light. And her boyfriend walks up. You know, my brother and I, we don't smoke or nothing. We're staying there. And my sister walks up and she says uh, to her boyfriend, Hey, Mike, can you give me a light? My phone in my back pocket, pocket chirps. Oh, well, that was weird. So I pull my phone out, look at it. And on my search engine it says, Do you need a light? <laughs> it's like, you've got to be kidding me. So I, so I just stopped right there and, and, and told them. I said, somebody heard what you just said. Because I said, it, it picked this up. And now someone, whoever is watching us, knows that you're needed in the life. Believe it or not, it's up to you. Yeah. I'll lay the phone there for you to think about. We are living in some end time, funny times where things are really taking place. I've already talked to you about a transceiver where it transmits and receives, can see and look and, and hear and receive at the same time. Okay. Case closed. All right, go on with the sermon. Where was I? He was unworthy even to go out to see Jesus. People don't want to see us. Sometimes they avoid us. But you know what? They may be witness to through someone else other than you. And then they may come to you via someone else. And you are there to receive them. Just like Jesus received these people when they came out to him. They weren't the problem. But he received them, and then he went to the problem. You follow what I'm talking about? 
You may not have witnessed to someone, but you may run into someone that someone else has already been witnessing to, and you're there to water. You're there to encourage. You're there to help them. And they may come in through someone else, but you may be another key into bringing them in. Many times we forget, as Christians, who we are. There's a saying out in the world, and you've heard it now since the year 2000. Capital One has this great commercial out that says, what's in your wallet? I want to ask you today, what's under your roof? In both of these passages, this gentleman, Centurion, says, and I quote, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. That was in Luke, in Matthew 8, verse 8, it said again, uh, Sister Michelle, if you're there, we'll bring up Matthew 8, 8. Both of them, he says the exact same language. I am not worthy for you to come into my house. I am not worthy for you to be in my home. This is a Gentile Roman centurion soldier making this statement. There are sinners and people in the world that are so unworthy. They, they're telling Jesus, I am unworthy to come into your house. I am unworthy to come to the church. I am unworthy. But then God does the miraculous, Sister Connie, and Jesus comes into our heart and our life. Yeah. And He fills us with the glorious baptism of the Holy Ghost. And He lives and abides under your roof. Right in your own home. He just sneaks right in there and embraces you and loves you. And by faith we take him in and he becomes a part of us. So I ask you today, what's under your roof? What's in your home? What's in your family? What's in your heart? The forgiveness and the love of Jesus Christ. See, we forget many times when we're out, you know, well, I'm not going to be a witness today. But yet the scripture says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yeah. And you go to the mall and say, I'm a Christian. What high to be? No. Even though you're trying to put your light out, try to hide. Your light's still going. And some sinner person in the world might be looking at you being real sheepish to you in the corner like, I see you. Yeah. You're there. Your light's still shining. How many of you know when your light's turned on? Nobody. That time that I was in that restaurant when that demonic woman looked at me, that witch, I didn't want to do anything great. Brother Evan, I wasn't doing anything special. I just went in and sat down in the booth and was going to eat. Next thing I know, I have some lady behind me. Tap them on my pew. Or my seat. My boot. She says, you're a Christian, aren't you? Well, what am I going to say, Brother Joseph? No, I'm not a Christian. I said, well, yes, I am. And she said, I felt you come through the door. What was she saying? I saw your light. I know who's under your room. Yes. You're living for God. There's something about you. I saw it. Somebody's living inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. We forget that sometimes. We forget that. Say, so, well, I'm gonna, I'm not really gonna, you know, I'm gonna be a witness today, but I'm really, you know, I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna be calm today. You try that and see how that works for you. You, you just try, try not being a witness. It's, it's, it's not easy, not easy to do. Amen. So in Acts chapter 2, he talks about us. Verses 1, 2, and 3, he talks about on the day of Pentecost, when they were all gathered together in one place. Something happened, and they were new with power from on high, and the Holy Ghost fell, and it changed it all. And they looked like they were drunk when they come out of that room. Did you, do you not think that was noticeable? Well, come on now, 
think about it. Here we are downtown Jerusalem. Here we are downtown, and they're in the marketplace. And all of a sudden, the, the disciples and Mary and all the women, and they come, they come staggering out of that upper room. Probably a few of them maybe even fell down the stairs. I don't know. But it was, it was a sight. They were staggered around and they're like, you guys are just drunk. They're, they're, you guys are just messed. You guys have followed Jesus so long, you're just in a stupor. You guys are, you guys are crazy Pentecostal. You're just crazy after Jesus. But then Peter stands up and says, uh -uh, uh -uh. these are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that yeah. which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And then it's okay if you act, if you act like once in a while that this is that. It's okay if you let your Holy Ghost express itself. It's okay. Just, just hang on. Try, try to keep it in check. Well, maybe we don't need to keep it in check. Maybe we need to just let it go. Hallelujah. But this Holy Ghost is fire. There, there's something to that. Amen. So when you were born again and God gave you the Spirit of God, something new came under your roof. Something new was there that you never had before. He has, he has lit you up. Christ in you is the hope of glory. I don't know of anyone that has been thrown a life a lifeline that they were drowning and they got saved and drug up the shore, drug back up onto the boat. That was unthankful and said, well, well, I hate you for saving me. I wish you had just never done that. No! They're not going to be quiet. They've been given hope. They've been given new life. They probably hugged that person and embraced that person. And they're crying and they're emotional. Just like when they got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You were crying. You were emotional. Because God has touched you. Something new came in under your roof. And you have been changed by the power of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Amen. In the Old Testament, they talked about how the, the presence of God would come in among them and it would dwell in the tent. Right time of the year, after they did the sacrifices, did everything they needed to do, had the plan, followed the ordinances, followed the guidelines, followed the ceremonies, and bang, the presence of God was right there. He came in and showed himself. He dwelled in tents. How humble is that? He came in and he dwelt in the tent. A tabernacle. It was called the Shekinah glory. The Shekinah glory of God came down and dwelt in that tabernacle. And there he would forgive the sins of the nations of the people of Israel one more time. Just think about it. We always put that in here today. That when the Holy Ghost gets inside of you, and you have something else under your roof, guess what? A little piece of Shekinah falls inside of you from the glory of God and He changes everything. That Shekinah glory of God had the power to forgive the whole nation of Israel. Do you not think He can forgive you? The Shekinah glory of God is inside of us. We call it in the New Testament the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Holy, whatever you want to call it. It's the Shekinah glory of God. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. He has given us a hope beyond all hope. He has sent us a light by the scarlet of mine. And given us hope beyond measure. Amen. Hallelujah. We possess today the Shekinah glory of God. Yes. How could you hide that? When the glory of God came down and hit that tabernacle, all of Israel knew it. Yeah. All of the children of Israel. They were probably standing at all, maybe in attention, I don't know. But when that cloud came over, and they knew the high priest was back there waiting, everybody was in awe at the presence of God. And then we think we're going to go to the bar or someplace and we're going to hide? I don't think so. You represent the Shekinah glory of God. Amen. He's under your roof. He was under your roof. He got under your roof when you were born again. Yes. Amen. Every time God does a miracle or something in your life or in your house, amen, that's a sign saying, I'm under your roof. Yes. I'm still here. Amen. Hang on. Greater is he that's in you. I'm still here. 
John 1, 14. You can go ahead and turn there, Sister Michelle. John chapter 1, and verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld what? His glory! We beheld it! We're holding it! We hold His glory! The only glory, the glory is only the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What have you been given? You've been given the glory of God in yeah. grace and in truth. Not just truth, but in grace and mercy. Jesus Christ represents grace and mercy and truth because the Spirit of God has fallen upon your life. Today we can be born again of water and spirit. And we can be filled with the glory of God. Amen. Matthew 3, 11. Amen. When the miraculous happens, he's letting you know that I'm still under your roof. I'm still there. I'm still with you. I need to baptize you with water under repentance. This is John the Baptist talking about. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy. Here's this unworthy stuff again. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Yeah. He's coming under your roof. He's going to help you. He's going to strengthen you. He's your fire. He's going to help us in a time of need. It's the glory of God. It's the kind of God. He's going to help us in these last days. Sister Lee, if you would come. I know the last times, these last days may be hard. Some of these last days may be difficult. We may have to change the order of the services and different things that we may have to do. I'm not for sure. There's a thing called cell ministry. My wife and I know a lot about it. And I don't want to say too much about it right now because my cell phone is right there listening to me. But I don't know about the structure of the church. Things might change. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you this. Whatever we do, we need the Shekinah glory of God to go with us and for us. And anything that we do, we need the glory of God because we need His presence in everything that we do. Can somebody say amen? amen. amen. This church is going to go forward. And then it's going to go up. The rapture of the church is about to take place. I don't know how much longer the Lord's going to hold this thing together. I know continentally that there's a few more nations that we can reach. And the Bible says that we should be able to reach all nations before the end comes. There's a few nations that we need to reach. Not too many, just a few. Maybe there's a few little things that need to happen politically right here at the very end before the Lord's return comes. I'm not for sure. But from what I read in my Bible, the one thing holding back is coming is the church. He wants the church to be ready. He wants the church to be on fire. He wants the church to realize that I am the Shekinah Amen. glory of God. Be ready because I come quickly. Hallelujah. So what's in your wall today? What's under your roof? It should be Jesus Christ. Yes. It should be the Spirit of God. It should be doing what you need to do in Christ. Amen. Let's all stand today. Amen. You can't talk to anybody in America that don't know that doesn't know this slogan from Capital One. What's in your wallet? What's under your roof? What's holding your walk with God? What's giving you the strength that you need to be victorious? In these last days, I'll tell you what it is. It's the Shekinah. We call it the Holy Ghost in you. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Hallelujah. Sister Leah, go right ahead and play us a song. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Let's pray right now, shall we? I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for its power. I thank you for its changing ability, Lord. You can heal us. You can give us guidance. You can give us direction. You can help us, Lord, produce the fruits of the Spirit, Lord. By being born of the Spirit, Lord, we can produce fruits, oh God. You can help us in our walk with God. Help us, Lord, in our daily things that we need to do. Help us in our witness, in our walk, in our life, in our light. Oh God, we thank you, God, for being born of the Spirit, of the Holy Ghost and power. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.